Okay, so what a popularity on my community post. I'm doing a launch box video for you today and I'm looking at setting up Wii. So in this video, I'm also going to show you how to configure your controllers. So in this case, I'm going to be using my PlayStation 3 controller. I'm also going to show you graphics settings, so enhancing your video settings. So check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, so we, as we know, uh, graphics and games don't look great and they didn't look great back in their day either, but we can really make these games look good and we can also use conventional controllers for this. So first thing I'm going to suggest you do is download the Dolphin emulator, which is emulator for Wii and GameCube. In RetroArch, which some of you might be using, you've got a core of Dolphin, but I suggest you actually use the standalone emulator for this, it's so much better. So the current version of this is the one just here, this is Windows Times 64, and this was last updated two months back. So if you download this one, it's gonna download into a zip file named Dolphin Master. And it's also saying that we need to download and install Visual C++ uh, for Visual Studios 2022. So if you don't have this installed, you need to install this. Or if you're not sure, then just install it anyways, because this is what this emulator requires. So once you've downloaded the emulator, the Dolphin emulator that is, we're just going to open this up. I'm using WinRAR. You might be using 7-zip or WinZip. And inside of this extracted file, you're going to find a folder. So just drag this one onto your desktop. And we're obviously going to use this one with LaunchBox. And we're going to open up our Wii games using LaunchBox is the front end. So if we go into this Dolphin folder, this is everything to do with the Dolphin emulator. And the Dolphin.exe, this one just here, is the emulator. This is how you access it. So just double left click on this one, and that's going to open up Dolphin. So first thing it's going to say is uh, Dolphin cannot find any GameCube or Wii games or WADs. So what I suggest you doing is just extracting your Wii games for this and just popping them into a folder, a dedicated folder. Now, as I did with yesterday's Retrobat Wii setup guide, I'm using my same game. Like I said, I've already got a few Wii games in my collection. So we got Super Mario Galaxy. And as you can see, this one's in a .rv set file extension. This emulator is going to use .isos as well and .wads. So let's just link this emulator up with my game folder, which as you can see, and I've just said, I put my game inside the Wii folder. So if I just double left click anywhere just here to set up this directory, I'm going to direct it to where my Wii game is, which is on my desktop. And here is where my Wii game is. So if you've got many games or you've got a few games, just pop them all into a dedicated folder. That's what I suggest. So once this is highlighted, just go to select folder. And as you can see, this one has now appeared. And whilst we're here, I also suggest from time to time, you see if this has got any updates. So to do this, just go to the help tab, uh, check for updates. And this one's currently running the latest version. So every couple of months, maybe you might see an update. But like I say, just generally take a look every now and again to see if it has got updates. It will just improve bits and pieces for you. Uh, next thing we're going to want to do is set up the controller. So if we just go to the controllers tab, first of all, you're going to see GameCube controller. So obviously ignore this one. The one we need to focus on is uh, emulating the Wii's Bluetooth adapter. So if we just take a look what's under here, we've also got option to connect a real Wiimote and nunchuck. Uh, but for this, I'm going to just be emulating the Wii remote. So if we go to configure just here, and under device, it's already picked up my controller and it shows as Xbox 360 controller. In other cases, you might need to select X input. So it's going to be either one of those. So I'm going to just leave this one to the Xbox 360 controller. So I've got my PlayStation 3 controller, and this is where things can get a little bit messy. Uh, the best way to do this is obviously get a picture of a Wiimote or a nunchuck and just define each one of these buttons with your, say, PlayStation or Xbox controller. So I'm going to just roughly go through this. So if I press on A, that's going to be used on my circle button on my PS3 controller. Uh, B, I'm going to use X and so on. So just make sure you press on each tab and then correspond it with your controller you've got plugged in. 
Uh, D-pad is a bit of a no-brainer. So on the Wii mode, there's obviously a D-pad. So that one's pretty simple to define. I'm using my D-pad on my PS3 controller. And once you've done this, the next thing you're going to want to do is go to where it says extension. So obviously you're going to want to put nunchuck. Okay, so once you've done all this just here, uh, you've also got options here to add extra buttons if you've got enough buttons on your controller. So some games uh, you might need to hold the Wiimote sideways or upright and so on. So that's going to vary from game to game. So once you've done these settings under general options, we're next going to move on to motion simulation. So motion simulation is what's going to be used as your pointer on your emulated Wiimote. So to do this, what I'm going to do is start defining my analog buttons on this one. So for up, I'm going to press up on my analog controller on my right. Down again, down and left and right. And also make sure to calibrate this as well. So if you just click on there and draw a circle with your right analog stick, uh, once you've done that, next up, what we're going to do is go to extension. Now, the nunchuck is going to act as the controller for controlling your character in certain games. And under nunchuck, we're just going to define this to the left analog stick, if you have got one. So up, down, left, and right. And also define your bumpers as well. And once you've done this, just give it a profile name, so I'm going to just call this PS3. And I'm going to save this so I don't need to keep going back to these settings. So let's close this down and open up Super Mario Galaxy to see if this is working, which it looks like it does. Okay, so let's just close out of there. And obviously this is still in a window mode. So we're gonna do some enhancements and video settings and also make this into a full screen. And then we're gonna set this up in launch box. So first thing you're gonna to need to do for this is go to the graphics tab at the top just here. And under general, just make sure VSync is checked. That's gonna reduce screen tear. I always recommend checking VSync in emulation, especially for 3D games. Now, aspect ratio, uh, most Wii games was actually in a 4x3 image. So this is up to you. I'm going to just leave this to 416x9, which is going to give us a stretched, almost widescreen image. And obviously, we're going to want to check start in full screen because we don't want a window mode. And let me just mention, uh, under your back ends just here, if some games fail to boot, then you've got an option here. It's either likely to start fine with OpenGL uh, by default, or Vulkan is another back-end driver which is likely going to work. If you go to Vulkan, it's going to display your graphics card. So I'm going to open GL for this for now. Uh, now under enhancements, this is where we can make our game look really fantastic. Internal resolution, currently this is set to the native resolution of what the Wii would have outputted. But you've got an option to go up to 5K just here. But let me be honest, most games will crash at some point uh, running these in 4K. Now, like I said in yesterday's setup, guys, 1080p is only 1080p, but it's a massive improvement upgrade to uh, Wii games. So I'm going to put 1080p for this for now. Anti-aliasing, again, the further up you go on this, just be aware that some GameCube games, if not all of them, do require some good hardware components, uh, such as a good GPU and a good processor also. So just be aware, the higher up you go, the more lag you're likely going to experience. I'm going to just put this on four times MSAA for now. Uh, under texture filtering, again, the further up you go on this, the more lag you might experience and games might look a bit choppy. So 
any means, if we just go to four times anastrophic just here, it's a massive improvement, and that's going to add a little bit of blur and make our games look a little bit more better than what they originally looked. Um, now, because I selected 16 by 9 force ratio just now, I'm going to select a widescreen hack, and this is going to put it into a widescreen image so it doesn't look as stretched. And finally, under post-process and effects, if anyone out there is into filters to make games look a bit bizarre, then you can mess around with these filters and uh, just experiment. So, you know, 16-bit is going to look like a Mega Drive game, uh, Sega Genesis. 32-bit is going to look more like a PlayStation or a Sega Saturn game. I'm going to just leave this to off for now. So those are the basic settings to get your games looking as good as possible. And that's about it for the Dolphin emulator side of things. So what we're going to do next is uh, we can obviously delete this zip file. We no longer need that one. And let's open up LaunchBox and get this one hooked up. So this is the current version of 13.5 I'm using here. What we're going to do then is go to Tools, Import. ROM files and this is going to bring up the wizard window so press next here and select files to import so this is the games so we're going to add folder and my game is located on the desktop and it's in the Wii folder I created so select folder next and what platform are you importing games for so it's Nintendo Wii so if this hasn't come up like mine just scroll down until you find Nintendo Wii next and what we're going to do next is choose an emulator for this. So I'm going to go to add and I'm going to hook this one up or link it up with that Dolphin emulator. So under emulator name, I'm going to just type in Dolphin Wii because as we know, Dolphin also uses GameCube games as well. And under application path, we're just going to find the .exe of the Dolphin emulator. So uh, I went to desktop and then it's inside my Dolphin folder. I left click once on Dolphin.exe and open. And I'm going to press OK and next. And this part just here will give you an option to move your game files elsewhere on your computer. I'm going to just go for use the files in their current location so it doesn't move anything around. And next thing, just make sure this one's checked. Uh, search for game information in the local metadata database. So we're going to choose that one so we can scrape information on the game and get some artwork. And your next part of this is going to be the option of downloading artwork for it. Now, if you go to check all, it's going to list every piece of art it can find. Or if we check none, it's going to disable everything altogether. Uh, I'm going to go for box 3D and box front, but that's up to you. Just be aware that it's going to take up a lot of unnecessary space on your hard drive if you select all for uh, all games you do. So go to next. Uh, configure MU Mubis is optional. That's going to get us some preview videos, that type of thing, if you're going to be using Big Box or a launch box. Uh, next, and next again. And the final scan is ready to import. It's found our Super Mario Galaxy game. So I'm going to go to finish. And this part just here is now going to be downloading the artwork for our game. And there we go. There's Super Mario Galaxy. So that's about it, and obviously if you want to change the appearance of your artwork, uh, what we're going to do is go to Image Group, and all the art you've just downloaded, you can list it just here. And there we go. So let's open this up now we've got this imported, and this should boot straight up with Dolphin, and there we go. Oh. 
Okay, so next up, I'm going to show you how to load in and install HD custom texture packs. So these obviously are designed by a very clever community of people to make some Nintendo Wii games look absolutely superb. So it's a very easy process of going into where Dolphin is installed, and you should have a folder inside your Dolphin directory uh, called Sys, as we can see. Inside of Sys, we're going to have another folder called Load. Now, inside of the load folder, what I'm going to do is create a new folder, and I'm going to call this one Textures. So next up, I'm going to download a texture pack, and I'm going to leave the link in my description. So the link's going to show you a Super Mario Galaxy 2 texture pack, and we've also got Super Mario Galaxy 1 texture pack. So for this, I'm going to go for the bottom option here, and I'm going to just download this texture pack and download anyway. Now it's going to start downloading, it's less than 200 megabytes so it shouldn't take you too long. So once this is downloaded, what we're going to do is just open this up. It's currently in the WinRAR file. I'm going to just drag this onto my desktop for now. And if we just go into that HT Textures Pact which we just extracted, if you go into info.txt it's going to tell you all the enhancements that the creator of this pack has done. And there's some very impressive stuff in this particular HD pack. So let's just close that down and just minimize this. Let's go back into Dolphin. And on Super Mario Galaxy or whichever game you're going to be doing this for, if you just right click on it and go to properties, and then just scroll over until you get to info, what you need to be looking for here is the game ID. So as it says, it's RMG. So let's just close this down and go back to the texture pack, open this up, and as you can see, it's also got RMG. So if you're going to be doing this, just make sure you're using the same ID, so RMG in my case. So once you've got your correct folder, RMG matches RMG with uh, Super Mario Galaxy, but basically you're looking for the same ID. So like I say, RMG and RMG, they're both the same. What we're going to do is go back into the Dolphin folder and we're going to go back into Sys folder, uh, Loads folder, and we're going to go back into Textures. Now, once we're in Textures, I'm going to create a new folder in here. And what we just copied just a minute ago, that game ID, I'm going to paste this in as the title of this folder. So I'm going to press Control and V together. And that's going to give us the folder for our textures to go into for Super Mario Galaxy. And I'm going to drag and drop all the contents inside of this folder, which I've just created. So once you dragged and dropped them into the folder, let's open up Dolphin again. And this time we're going to go to the graphics tab. And right at the end, we got advanced. And we're going to enable load custom textures and prefetch custom textures. So just make sure these are both checked and then we can close this down. Now, if we open up Super Mario Galaxy again, in theory, this should now be with the HT pack enabled. And there we go, custom textures loaded, custom textures loaded. So if you've not yet hit notifications, please hit notifications. It really helps my channel and also gives you the opportunity to get the videos as I upload them. I also cover Retro Bat, Retro Arch, and nowadays Bat Sarah too. Also follow me on social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And be sure to check out my new membership option. And just to mention, my store is now open, so take a look. There isn't much in there right now, but... You might see something you might like and it helps support my channel. But until next time, stay retro.